This is KGW News at Sunrise. This morning on Sunrise, a shooting suspect under arrest just minutes after the crime. Now police are looking for her suspected accomplice. Plus, families want Boeing to face possible criminal charges for a pair of fatal crashes. Why the Department of Justice may not prosecute. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm Dieter Johnson. But first, let's check in with Daisy Caballero for a quick look at the forecast. Hey, Daisy. Hey, Deidre. Happy Sunday to you and also happy Sunday to all of our viewers. It's going to be a little bit of a cloudy start for us, for many of us off of the coastline, up and down the I-5 corridor, while some folks are dealing with some clear blue skies. Believe it or not, this is how we are starting our Sunday off 60 degrees. Last check out at PDX winds coming out from the northwest at right about seven miles an hour. The rest of your current temperatures uh, 52 degrees over in Forest Grove, a little bit cooler. One of our cooler spots actually 58 degrees over in West Lynn, 57 degrees over in Gresham. And as we're looking down south, almost hitting 60 degrees for the Salem area as of this morning. Portland, Vancouver and also Longview will be in the upper 60s to low 70s for today. Partly sunny skies. There's potential for some light pockets of drizzle, which we'll talk, of course, more about in my detailed forecast. We'll also talk a little bit more about this red flag warning that will be in effect in the areas highlighted here in the red that will officially start at one o'clock this afternoon and will be lasting all the way until eight o'clock. More details coming up. All right, thanks so much, Daisy. Well, we've got a quick traffic alert for you this morning. The Hawthorne Bridge is closed for most of the day. That's for all cars, cyclists, and pedestrians. It's so crews can grease counterweight cables, which is part of regular maintenance for the bridge. It will reopen at 6 o'clock tonight. Portland police arrested a woman in connection with a downtown shooting and robbery just minutes after the crime Saturday morning. However, detectives are looking for the suspected accomplice. Our city Dorner has the details. This violent and chaotic incident all happened around 12:30 a.m. today. Three people were walking by Southwest 14th and Taylor when a man and woman robbed them, but the attack didn't stop there. The woman now identified as Jada Wise is accused of shooting one man in the leg and hitting another woman with her pistol. A Portland police officer was on Southwest 14th and Taylor when a group of three flagged her down. They had been robbed and one of them was shot by a man and woman the officer saw running off. As she was approaching, and so she sent out uh, over the radio a suspect description and direction to travel uh, while she at the same time was gathering information from the victims. The officer's quick thinking didn't end there as she helped the 28-year-old man who got shot in the leg until EMS arrived. She put a tourniquet on the leg of the man who was shot because um, he was bleeding, uh, bleeding pretty heavily. While they waited, other officers began to respond, tracking down the suspect just four minutes later on Southwest 19th and Burnside. They really only had a matter of minutes to track down the suspect. Otherwise, um, you know, very likely she would have been able to escape. The suspect was 20 year old Jada Wise. She's currently booked into the Multnomah County Detention Center, now facing charges of robbery and assault in the first degree. People should absolutely not think that just because we charge one way that that's the end all be all and can never be changed. Portland police are still on the hunt for the other suspect. Now, the man who was shot did survive and is recovering, but the woman who was pistol whipped denied medical treatment. If you have any information on the incident, please call Portland Police. Back to you. Police in Wasco County say they've arrested the suspect in a death investigation. The sheriff's office says 22-year-old Noe Zaragoza was taken into custody Saturday afternoon in Camas. He was identified as a suspect Saturday morning. That happened after officers in the Dalles found the body of a man at reports of a shooting. Also in Wasco County, investigators have identified the man killed by police after he stole a boom truck and led officers on a chase. They say 68-year-old Jimmy Ewing was shot by officers Tuesday afternoon after ramming a police car and then driving the vehicle toward officers. The investigation continues. That safety, that number one priority, of Boeing doesn't mean anything when 346 people die. 
The families of those killed in two Boeing plane crashes want the company to be prosecuted. But the New York Times reports the Department of Justice might allow the company to enter into another agreement that would prevent the company from facing a criminal charge of conspiracy to defraud the FAA. Boeing previously avoided a criminal charge by entering into agreement to overhaul its compliance program. But January's door plug blowout happened just before the agreement expired. Prosecutors are deciding whether to revive the charge. Normally, if a criminal defendant negotiates a sweetheart deal, but then violates the conditions of that deal, DOJ would bring the hammer down. That said, Boeing is not a normal defendant. This is a company that's critical to our economy and also national security. You can bet DOJ is taking that into account. The agency has until July 7th to make its decision. Oaks Park in Portland now faces a lawsuit over last week's ride malfunction. It left 28 people stuck upside down for almost half an hour. A mother filed the lawsuit on behalf of her 14-year-old daughter. The lawsuit alleges the teen sustained injuries from being stuck on the atmosphere ride. It also says the teen suffers from post-traumatic stress and anxiety from the incident. The filing also claims the park failed to properly maintain and operate the ride. And we're certainly not accusing Oaks Park of doing anything intentionally wrong, but it's a negligence claim. And that means if you make a mistake, you're responsible for the consequences. And in this case, they were pretty severe. Park officials say they can't comment on the lawsuit. New data shows a majority of unemployed Oregonians have to wait more than three weeks to get their money from the state. The rates for first time payments are the worst they've been in four years. Investigative reporter Evan Watson looks into the problem. Unemployed workers in Oregon are frustrated. If you're already past due on your bills and your rent, you cannot catch up if you live paycheck to paycheck. The state is putting a lot of people at risk. A big change from the Oregon Employment Department promised a fresh start to help process unemployment benefits. One of the strengths of the new system is that we can quickly adjust to make improvements. But three months later, the Oregon Employment Department is under even more scrutiny. And I cannot be the only one that this is affecting. Oregon is failing to send out quick payments to most unemployed Oregonians. A recent drop-off in performance coincides with the rollout of a new online claim system, even if that's not the only cause. Since April, just 40% of unemployed Oregonians have been paid their first benefit within three weeks, according to the U.S. Department of Labor. That ranks Oregon as one of the worst states in the country at sending out timely unemployment payments. The national standard is 87 percent. From September to March, Oregon hovered around 70 percent. Then Oregon transitioned to a new Francis Online platform. Kathleen Chicky Newsbomber lost her job at Wells Fargo this year, part of massive layoffs. She applied and started receiving unemployment benefits. Then she took a vacation. Following the rules, she didn't apply for payments while on vacation. But when she came back, Oregon had changed its system. Her continuing claims were denied, and she waited more than three weeks to receive benefits again. If this is happening to me, it's happening to people that do not have, you know, money in savings. They are living paycheck to paycheck, and that's where it was a big concern. The agency cut down its phone hours from 9 to 4 each day. And it's no longer taking calls on Mondays to try and catch up on claims and fix payment delays. When you start to see the numbers go lower, uh, it can either mean that we're falling behind or it can actually mean that we're getting caught up on a backlog. The department blames staffing changes for many of its issues. Temporary pandemic era staffers started leaving in 2022 and OED says the number of claims outpaced the staff left to handle them. Oregon lawmakers approved funding for more staffers earlier this year and the department hopes to onboard everyone by August. But that doesn't fully explain the significant delays in first-time payments over the last three months. Every state that has gone live with a new system sees that uh, temporary decrease in productivity. A department spokesperson told KGW that resolving older claims could be affecting this data, but ultimately they're still analyzing the data and don't know why it's taking so long for people to get paid. Someone needs to be held accountable for what is this, like, it's the system is broken, in my opinion. Francis Online is the same platform that Oregon rolled out last year for Paid Leave Oregon, and there were issues then. Newsbomber had problems getting paid through that system, too. You thought any issues with Francis Online would have been fixed in the Paid Leave Oregon rollout and not 
what we're seeing currently in right. the employment rollout. You would, I would think that they would learn from that. State lawmakers started accountability hearings for the employment department delays last month. Another hearing is set for September.